For followers of the vlog, you would have noticed a slightly obsessive attitude towards the orchestral template. A great amount of importance being put upon it, which is why I've been searching and striving to create with my good friend Jake Jackson the world's, well maybe not biggest template, but best. This is because there's this rare opportunity, this project we've been doing with the BBC Symphony Orchestra of true total collaboration between professionals, engineers, composers, beginners, students, learners. A lot of you have downloaded BBC Discover, which is available for free if you can't afford it, or 49 dollars, euros and pounds. Many of you have downloaded the Core Edition, and many of you have really gone for it with the Pro Edition. And indeed, a lot of you have gone to the page to download the purpose-built templates we have created, not only for my preferred DAW Logic, but also Pro Tools Cubase. All of these templates work on exactly the same principle, one that Jake Jackson and I have spent the last couple of years working on. But a lot of you have said, okay, got the instructions, have watched the making of, how about actually using it in a real world scenario? So whether you've got the Cubase or the Pro Tools or the DP, is there one yet for DP? I do hope so. This, I hope, will give you a useful insight into how I work with it as a composer and how that then translates to the engineer. And we kind of uncover some pretty extraordinary opportunities here. Now, down below in the video description is a content so you can jump straight to the bit that you want if you're using this as reference. But just for those of you thinking about approaching one of our templates, a bit daunted by how complicated they seem, why use a template? Well, an orchestra is an extraordinary thing. It acts as a single organic mass but it can be broken down into its choirs. So your strings, your woodwinds, your percussion, your brass, and then into your, your sections, your violin section, your cello section, and from there into the individual players. And within the sections, the choirs, and the individual players, these instruments can be played in many different styles or articulations, as we call them. One of the real problems I have with computerized music is, well, it's computers that with a click. I just can't stand it. It doesn't work as quickly as our creative minds are kind of bubbling. It doesn't work as quickly as someone writing stuff down, jotting it down on a stave. But I can't jot stuff down on a stave because I don't read music. So a template is primarily a way of us accessing all of these different colours, articulations, sections, soloists and choirs. It gets us from one end of the orchestra to the other nearly as quickly as a conductor pointing at the different sections. In order to get the best out of any orchestra, but particularly the BBC SO, which is a true symphony orchestra, and all of those colours and timbres, all of the percussion instruments, you really don't want to have to every time you want to switch from a xylophone to a glockenspiel. But because Jake and I have a combined experience probably of nearly 40 years within film, TV and games, we not only understand kind of my plight, kind of getting your, your, your orchestra and all the bits together there so you can jump on things as and when these ideas bubble, but also so that we can deliver it to broadcast quality to the delivery requirements with all the stages in between, namely the recording and mix sessions. So these templates offer you the ability not only to create and compose and if need be professionally track and mix your music too. Like us composers having to construct a virtual orchestra within a virtual environment, an engineer has to construct a virtual studio with all of his favourite bits and bobs all wired up together so it spits out of with the correct amount of reverb on. You don't want to have to set up a recording studio every time you want to record something. So as I said, I've teamed up with Jake again. Hey mate! And we're simply gonna do a bit of music together. And there is actually a revelation at the end of this film that I think is pretty exciting. Okay, so I'm going into the BBC page, Explore. Uh, that's all nice. And then we've got templates. There we go. So I'm going to work in core to, so we can demonstrate how you mode switch 
into pro yep. and why you'd want to mode switch into pro. And basically what we thought we'd do is just do a workflow. So yes. I'm going to write a few bars of orchestral music. Then this rare thing that I've, I don't have to track play anymore. So I'm just going to fire you the the file yep. and see where you take it from there. So this is a great uh, example uh, using Core of if you're an owner of Core, but you have an engineer who has the pro version of of how the engineer can take advantage of all of these different mic positions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Core just comes with Jake Jackson's kind of pre-mixed setting, which is very good. Um, so I'm basically downloading all of the core uh, templates. We're going to mix in stereo, but they want it in stems. Yeah, perfect. So we're going to use the we're going to use the core two template. Okay, so here we uh, have our, uh, all of our lovely routing. We've got this great new function with template that we've got our mix monitor and master monitor. So I want to monitor out of that, but also I'm just going to send it out to E2, which is uh, how I can route it so that you can hear the tutorial. And I think what I'm going to do is probably start with a harp. Okay, you name the next instrument. This would be fun. It's kind of uh, whose line is it anyway? So um, a little a little cello, string cello string pad underneath that. Cello string pad. Okay, I know just the thing. It's called the string stack. So the thing is, if you click on the whole stack, it'll load all the instruments, which is maybe not what you want to do. But I've done that, so I've, uh, I make that mistake all the time. So cello longs. I think I'm gonna do actually a little maybe a t little two note thing. Just say, no, this is my expression. This is my modulation. Uh, a lot of people only use modulation. I'm a bit showbiz, jazz hands. So I like to go bigger and quieter and bigger. Okay, I'm just going to do a little loopage on the harp. And then, seeing as I've loaded all of the strings now, I may as well do a little answering phrase in the uh, violas. And then I'm going to do cello legato. These cellos don't go down to a low A. It's funny that. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to add a couple of bass parts. So I'm going to start with uh, pizzicato. I'm going to copy the cellos onto the bass legato and take them down an octave. Um, now, in reality, they wouldn't be able to switch from pizzicato to legato that quickly, so I'm going to have it coming in halfway through that bar. Let's have a little look at the automation. Well, you could have Divisi bases, Christian, of course, you know. Yes, yes, but I'm being a bit of a purist. You could have a huge orchestra here. You know, this could be a, you know, 24 bases. Okay, I think we should do a nice little portamento down to there. So let's make that nice and quiet. This is fun. We should do more <laughs> of this. Okay, and what I'm actually going to do is actually going to pull that before the beat so that the portamento happens before... Usually, how would you usually, when they say, how do you want us to do this gliss, and it's not, not marked, if it just says gliss into next note, yes. they'll often say, do you want us to do it on the bar, before yes. the bar, and at which point? Just think even a little bit four, that's nice. And then... No, too much. It was it was right before. Okay, and then let's just have a look at the violins. I'm going to do a little uh, tremolandi.
So I think I've probably got a little bit ahead of myself. But basically, uh, what we're looking at are, 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 are basically kind of they're pimped all in ones. So you'll see that I've got first violins, legato, longs, shorts, and colenos. Uh, this is uh, a, a fairly established way that composers like to divide up their different articulation types. Now, with brass and woodwinds, it tends to be longs and shorts, but with strings, you just go that little bit deeper. And the reason is that you do tend to approach these differently, both on the scoring stage, but also at mix stage. So often you'll get uh, the players maybe not to play the pizzicato parts. You'll just want them to take the lead lines, that kind of stuff. When we look at the shorts, what it contains is spiccato staccato which i would say is like spiccato is a very short staccato it's like a dramatic short and then spiccato cs which is like with the with the mutes on um so basically we have just a single instance for all of those different shorts and it's currently selected to uh, uh, spiccato now i've just done something that's created in the effects which contains tremolo tremolo cs sulpont long harmonics and the reason we call these effects is they're often like a little sheen that you'd want to add on top of the mix and not necessarily get players to, to, to replace. So these are great things to separate off. But I just want to show you how quickly, say if I wanted to double up the tremolo with the long harmonics, how quickly I'd do that. I'd simply duplicate that track and then select long harmonics. Now, what happens there is, is it retains all of the routing, all of that kind of stuff. By far the best way of creating new tracks in within a template is to duplicate an existing track so that you know that the stemming, all of the routing is intact. So I'm just going to end up at the very end here with a bit of harmonics. Oh, nice. Sorry, this is a product of my palette gear that the, you get these dropout stuff. Um, so just one more thing. I just think maybe a little, just a little violin. Oh, a bit, how about a bit of woodwind? How about like a, a, a flute or something? Let me just do a little short, if I may. And then, then I'm, when I say next instrument, you'll get your, you'll get your moment. <laughs> Okay, I so want a I'm gonna, I'm gonna. These spiccatos have a lovely rounded sound to them, so not to. It's our second violin's doing this, is it? Yeah. I'm making horrible noises here that really aren't working. Great. And the way I would describe expression is I use it to basically balance the different sections. So actually what I've enjoyed about this is I've enjoyed the, the harder, the harsher, more slightly dramatic layers, but I've just actually physically turned it down, rebalanced it within the rest of the group. Right, next instrument, Mr. Jake. Flute, please. Okay, so this time I'm going to be careful not to activate the entire track. So what you must do... Click on the little arrow. So, ...is you must do that. So uh, a little a legato flute, do we think? Don't mind. I'll let you just work out what you'd like. Just a solo, just a, just a single, just a little line... At yeah, a little legato. And then I think it just needs a, a bass drum or something with it, and then I think we'll be done. There's an end of part if I've ever heard one. And just a little bit of percussion, and I think we'll, we'll move on, shall we? A little bit, yeah, but just, cut, just one more thing. What I love about working with a full orchestra is it's all about colours. So if you're ever worried about stuff getting repetitive, you just just change the textures and the colours. So we've got this little violin ostinato thing coming in here, and I'm going to put it in some bassoon. Now, just I think it's a little bit 
I'm going to actually make it the bassoon section, not a solo. And I'm going to just take it down an octave and... Okay, groovy and uh, percussion. What would you like, mate? Uh, I think, I guess it's cymbal swell towards the end, maybe. But, uh, just and a ba bass drum or something like that. Great, how you can just add tension where there just is none in the composition whatsoever. Mm. Okay, and a little cymbal swell. So this is great. So this is like this my job here is done. I'm really enjoying this, Jake. This is so fun to then just go, right, over to you. And all I have to do is uh, close all this monkey business up and uh, save and then just wang it over to you. Yep. No audio, nothing. So I've got a little hotkey there to we transfer. So what we're going to do today is Jake is actually going to mix it in the box direct from what I've sent him, which is what makes this so exciting because all, all I have to send him is uh, this file. But what we'd usually do if we we're going to use a, an orchestra and Jake was going to mix certain live elements in is kind of commit it to tape, put it into Pro Tools. And we've set it up for that. First thing to do is to take it out of hide and then we've got all of these amazing print stems. We've got uh, the wind stack, the brass stack, uh, the perk stack. Now, I'm, I'm not going to print any brass because we're not using any brass uh, in this instance. Keys, percussion, strings, and the woodwinds are already in to record. And then I'm just going to record it from bar one. I always think it's just lovely to send something off knowing that there is a click printed. One way or another, we will be able to uh, put put a, a, a file together. So there we are. We've got the click in record. And off we go. And from bar one. Click's going down. So you'll see then everything is beautifully color coded. Now, what am I using the stacks and these separate tracks here? Now, these are the multi tracks. Mix engineers don't want the full arrangement kind of tr uh, bounced in place, if you know what I mean. The, this this um, protocol of longs, shorts, pits and colenos and string effects tends to work both in the context of uh, what you're recording live and in the context of mixing. Now, what you'll see if we just make these um, waveforms a bit bigger. So what you'll see is the different elements. We've got our longs, so we started with our cellos, and then we added our little string shorts, much to the consternation of our engineer, and our, we've got our little effects, our tremolandi and harmonics here, and our bass pizzicatos here. So what's this here? If, say, for example, Fiona was doing the tracking, we'd send her this stuff and the click down here. And if Jake's doing the mixing, say for example, uh, we're overlapping and Jake, you and I have to start mixing, uh, or rather you have to start mixing the score when I'm doing day two of tracking, yes. for example. Yeah. Um, it's great at this point is to go, okay, so these, all of these ones here, the multi-tracks, go off to Jake to mix, and all of these are our playback stems. They they go off to Fiona or whoever's assisting Air Studio. And basically what that means is that particularly with larger sessions, you haven't got masses of multi-track playbacks for an engineer to have to, to wrestle. It's just great to have it on a few different faders. And for me, you tend to have your strings in one session, you tend to do your winds, your brass in overdub sessions. So it's great to just literally be able to ping out what you're recording. And obviously you can package this all together. And if you want 
to separate, you can uh, later in the day. But this is what's great about this system is that is all prepared if this is the point at which you're coming out of logic. But if I just go back a step and go simply to the MIDI arrangement, let's say that we're just doing it all in the box. So I hope you're not using this as an orchestral programming tutorial because it's, it's very light in that respect, but just giving you an idea of how I work within the template, flitting between different tracks, duplicating, going between different articulations, etc, etc. Now, over to Jake, and what I'm going to do, all I have to do with BBC, is just send him the logic file, and it's relatively small, a few megabytes. And likewise, this is not meant to be an engineering or mixing tutorial or even a demonstration. Jake would spend a lot more time on these things. So, linked below are two really good, I think, tutorials that Jake and I have done. One is the composition one that I've done, and one is a uh, really in-depth tutorial with Jake mixing some music of mine. That was made several years ago, so uh, we look a little bit different. Right, on to you, Jake. Yeah, it's opened up, and uh, I've got your tracks. Lovely, excellent. I'm going to, I've opened this up in core, but um, I want to be able to play around with some of the mic positions, I think. Just, just a couple, not all of them, just a couple of them, I think. So um, there is, so we have this brilliant thing called mode switching, right? So we switch between the core, discover if we wanted to, and pr the professional version. So I can go through and convert all of these at once, I believe. And now that key command I don't actually know, so you might have to teach me this one. Okay, so if, say for example, you open the first violins FX, yeah. where it says mode, yes. core, there's a little arrow, convert yeah. that to pro. Yeah. And then holding down control and clicking the little round arrow to the left of pro mode, switch all instances to pro. So control click that. Of course, it hasn't actually had load anything other because it's the cell the same mix, right? That's what's so great about this. It hasn't had to load any new any new samples. Could do a very quick mix. Here's our flute legato. This is nice, but I think I want a little bit more ambience on it. So I'm going to turn off the uh, the mix and I'm going to use a bit of the close mic, uh, a bit of the ambience, and a bit of the tree. That's very nice. This is on the long side. I can now just turn on, look at the left-hand side of my screen, I'm now going to turn on a bit of reverb, and there it is. Our double jugging technique there, Christian, for those who follow us there, both reverbs. Double jug. And uh, let's just add a touch of EQ to it. Not that it means much, but just a... Very nice. So let's now move down to the uh, bassoons. Do the same thing. Nice. Let's just put a bit of reverb on that. I'm going to go do that a little bit crazy. I quite like that, but I'm going to just add a little bit of delay here. Let's have a look. Uh, stereo delay there to our spare, one of our spare orcs we have set up in our template. Uh, that's right. Just a little subtle thing there, just a little silly thing, but just to demonstrate how you can add these extra, use these extra FX channels we've got set up in our it's template. It's those little one percents, Jake. It's these one percents that is where you bring the magic. Exactly. So this one, I'm definitely going to look at the. Um, it's nice, but I want it slightly drier, I think. So I'm going to use a bit of reverb for the. Go back to our. I'm going to use this really rather nice one here called this uh, stereo. Along with our clothes. I love how they just pop in these these as you press play, they pop they pop in, it's really rather nice. Very nice. I like that. Okay, so just a bit of reverb for that. I'm just gonna add a little um, a compressor onto this as well. Just to help, just to to add a tiny bit of just control over some of those louder notes. Nice. Just adding a just again a couple of dB off there. Nothing more exciting than that. Okay, what's next? Our bass drum. Here we go. Okay, so this obviously wants to be big and puffy and and um, and just very soft. So let's just let's add a little bit of real bottom end rumble.
So that bass is sticking out a bit, so let's just add a little compressor to that. And I'm just going to add, turn on our compressor and costly the mix here. And there, it's a very quick mix. And so now, if I were to to finish this, I call it finished, I would, um, I can actually use these uh, print tracks differently to have Christian just using them to send them to me if I was to mix it. So now these stacks become my different stems if I'm sending them to a, to a, to a dub. So that now I've got the full mix, which I could, I'll stick and record. I can put individually the stacks and they become my mix stem so that if they want separate um, winds and brass or percussion to take, if there's a percussion hit gets in the way of some dialogue, they can just take down the, the, the percussion by itself. So it's a very useful way of multiple faceting this, uh, this, this template. Great stuff. So Jake, um, should we put that into record so you, we can see you sending that? And, and you'll be recording a stereo mix as well. I've got my four stems and my full mix. My little sync pip there as well, which is great. And there is our beautiful mix. If I go to, you can see them there. There they are. The stacks now become our stems. We've got a full mix. All the reverbs and stuff are with their own stems. And I can send that back to you um, and you can tweak it if you needed to tweak it or um, that's it done. What I think has been incredible about this process, so I thank you very much for asking us to do this, how to use it in real life. What's been extraordinary, scary, is it blurs the process of composition and mixing in a way that I find pretty interesting. He could take, say for example, some orchestral recordings that he made, embed them into my logic file and send them back to me and I could do all sorts of stuff with them. But what's also really fascinating is many of you'll know that one of the hardest things to do with regards to recording live musicians and getting them professionally recorded and professionally mixed is that it often grinds up against the shifting sounds of a post-production schedule. Suddenly the cut is changed after you've performed the mix. The great thing here is Jake gets to do what he does, whether that be tracking or mixing, and you still have the malleability that is required of a modern media composer. Cuts changing at the last minute, CGI shot comes in. And you're not restricted to using the host plugins. You simply have to pre-agree with your engineer what you are going to use. I know that Jake has the Fab Filter Suite, which is excellent, by the way. And I would say, well, let's stick to the host plugins, the Fab Filter Suite, and then we will be literally sweet. This for me is very exciting. I have a feeling that there is going to be a boom of stuff happening. People making just so much stuff that's going to require our work. It excites me to think that we can invest into the industry the talent of tracking professionally, recording professionally, of playing stuff with professional musicians remotely with this slightly more fluid way of collaborating, just sharing logic files back and forth, the odd bit of audio maybe. Exciting times ahead. 
I know that we've zipped through it today, so you may have many questions. Please put them in the links down below. And I know Jake's particularly uh, thorough about checking out questions that are asked on the videos he appears in. Thanks so much, Jake, uh, for your, your input on this. It's been such an amazing journey, and I doubt this is the last video I make about orchestral templates. So do, if you haven't done already, subscribe, ding that bell to be notified the next time we make a video. And one of those, Mr. Jake Jackson, top man. See you later.